Opinions and stories around the game we love told by your favorite storytellers. Stay up to date with all things cricket. Subscribe to Crick Buzz's YouTube channel and press that bell icon now. Two points each on the board. And I think this is a stage when they'll have to really put their hand up and say, if we are going to be semi-final contenders, and at the moment it looks like England and Australia seem to have sort of put a little reservation. They've just called up and said, can you make us a booking for the semi-final? They haven't confirmed the reservation yet. So, Joy, these two teams will need to try and cancel that reservation. Absolutely. And one of them is going to do, you know, whoever wins is going to get somewhere there. I like this fact, you know, look at what's happened. Quinton Decock has put up an explanation out there. He's apologized for people. So, he's going to come back into the side. This side looked completely dispirited before a match. You know, one of their top players not playing. Something happened. They played brilliantly. They won the match. Now, Quinton Decock is back again. They're looking good. On the other hand, Sri Lanka has started well, but their last match would just, just dispirit them a bit. Just because, I mean, look. England is an extremely strong side. So, you know, you've got to give them that sort of weight. But this is actually a good clash. I just I just think that still South Africa has just a little bit more than Sri Lanka in the tank. Let's put up the South African team. Is it going to be a clear Quinton de Kock in Heinrich class and out? Or are we seeing more permutations and combinations? Anybody else we want to see in that team, Michael? No, I don't think so. I think it'll be a like-for-like -like swap. Um, I thought they played a really good game, actually. I thought they played uh, some clever cricket. There's enough There's enough talent in that group to to, to force a, a surprise. I, I wouldn't have had South Africa uh, making the semi-finals at the start of the tournament. Uh, the way they played the last game, I thought, wait a minute. You know, I thought against Australia, they didn't get enough runs, but they nearly forced Australia um, in, into not chasing down that target with some good combinations with the ball. Uh, it would be a surprise for me if South Africa made the semi-finals. Um, you know, they've just got to keep winning, keep playing the way they did in the last game. You never know, this this might galvanise them, bringing Quinton back in, let's see. It'll either galvanise or it might disrupt them. One thing's for sure is, uh, tomorrow's game, the story will be Quinton de Kock because of the, the issues of the last few days. And the best way I always say for any player to, to silence um, a little bit of controversy is by scoring runs. Scoring runs and taking a couple of flying catches and winning your team the game. And that's what Quinton will, will have to try and do tomorrow because he's coming into a side that have just won. You know, he's coming into a side that have just played probably their best game for a while. Uh, so he'll know that he's under pressure with the controversy, but also under pressure because of the, the side's, um, you know, real high-class performance without him in yep. the last game. Plenty of positives, be it, be it the batting of Aidan Makram or, of course, the quality of the likes of Nokia and Rabada. But in the opposition, there's one player we talked about. We expected him to play an impact role, and that's Mahesh Thikshana. And he didn't quite get tested the way we thought he would. Is South Africa going to face the mystery of Thikshana? I definitely think so. I think because, you know, you, they'll choose him over Fernando every time. I think Thikshana got some things right. Obviously, it was his first game of the tournament, coming back from an injury. He was tentative, but I would definitely throw Thikshana in. Look, South Africa is a decent bowling side. It's one of the better bowling sides. If you look at their bowling, I think they're pretty well-rounded. Batting, they depend very heavily on Dikok when he's there and Makra. And these are the only two guys who are that, you know, superior class, you know, because David Miller is a great, great player, but he's been really out of form and he just hasn't given them, he hasn't given us the David Miller that we knew so much. So, that's my problem. The point is that if I have only Markram and Decock out there who I think are really solid batsmen, I would throw Thikshana at them early, I'd throw Hasaranga at them early and see where it goes from there. Because that's South Africa's vulnerability. Yeah. It's not their bowling, it's their batting. Yeah. Uh, I, if I was Sri Lanka, I'd take a leaf out of Af Afghanistan. Just understand your strengths. You know, what, what does South Africa want? They want pace on the ball. That's what they're used to. Uh, they love the pace. Um, I, I'd throw all my spin combinations at a South African team. I'd use as many spinners as possible and just say, OK, if you're going to play and play well, you're going to have to do so against the spinning deliveries. And good luck to you because I, I know from playing against South Africa, if you put pace on the ball, phew, all of those players grow up on you know, decent pitches where the ball's coming on. Um, the one element that you've always fancied getting South Africa with is either swing uh, or, you know, a bit of spin. Uh, so Sri Lanka should take a leaf out of Afghanistan, just go exactly with your strengths. 
uh, and get the spinners into the game. Spin to win, as Shane Warne says. That's what I'll be Spin to for. win, makes sense. They didn't do it against Australia. Let's put that squad up one more time before we finish this preview and see who they could get in there, Joy. We mentioned it at the end of the game. The two Dhananjayas. One is Akhila Dhananjaya, the other is Dhananjaya De Silva, who also strengthens their batting. That will give them that extra spinner to add to what uh, Tikshana and, of course, Warindu Hasaranga have to offer. I definitely, I'd go for them and I'd take off, I'd take off Chamira or Lahiru. I think Chamira at this point in time is the one that I'd take off. It doesn't matter, I'll get a couple of overs from somewhere else. They need to play to their strengths. If they've got to beat South Africa, they're not going to beat it with the fast bowling. And again, what's happening out here is, if you're a 140 plus bowler in Sun Services, it does well. If you're a 140 bowler in the Gulf, you're just sitting up to be hit because you know you're just coming at the right pace. <laughs> you're not losing that much off the pitch, and the batsman can actually time the ball. And the last two matches, their fast bowlers just disappeared. So I'd play with an extra spinner. And Sri Lanka, at their best, was one of the most innovative sides in the World Cup. You know when they won the 1996 World Cup, they need to go back to their roots to do that if they're going to make a difference in this tournament.